Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the famous musical success, Showboat, starring Gordon McRae and his two charming guest stars, Dorothy Kirsten and Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical hit is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, the curtain rises on our winter season of musical shows and operettas with the immortal Jerome Kern, Oscar Hammerstein musical play, Showboat, based on the novel of the same name by Edna Ferber. <laughs> This is the story of Captain Andy's showboat, the story of the Mississippi, and of the river gambler Gaylord Ravenall, the part in which I appear this evening. It is the story of the showboat's leading lady, Julie, played for us by Lucille Norman, and of Captain Andy's beautiful daughter, Magnolia. Our other charming guest for tonight, the lovely soprano of the Metropolitan Opera, Dorothy Kirsten. I remember it all began the summer I was 17. My father's showboat, the Cotton Blossom, was tied up at the dock in Natchez. I remember it was a warm summer afternoon. And as I stepped down onto the levee, I saw Gaylord Ravenall for the first time and took him to my heart forever. I remember that I said hello as though I'd known him always. And he took off his hat and bowed. How do you do? Do you live here? No, no, I'm just a wayfarer along the river. So am I. Which way are you going? Either way. Which way are you going? Anywhere Papa gives shows. Oh? Are you an actress? No, but I'd give anything if I could be. Why? Because you can make beautiful things, wonderful things that never happen in real life. Ah, but wonderful things do happen. Why, this very day I was standing here on the levee feeling blue. And suddenly I looked up and... I have to go now. Why? Well, I... I didn't realize you're talking to me and I don't know you. Well, if you like to make believe things, why can't we make believe we know each other? All right. We haven't seen each other for 75 years and you're my long-lost nephew. No, no, no. I don't think I like the idea of being your nephew. Let's imagine that we've just met. But we really have. Yes, but let's just suppose we've fallen in love at first sight. All right. The game of just supposing is the sweetest game I know. Our dreams are more romantic than the world we see. And if the things we dream about don't happen to be so, that's just an unimportant technicality.
What is it, Valon? The judge would like to see you. What for? Oh, nothing serious. But you've got to come and have a talk with him. You will excuse me, ma'am? Yes, of course. I hope I'll see you again. Oh, I hope so, too. Goodbye. Goodbye. there looking after him i only know that finally i went in search of julie the leading lady of the showboat to tell her what had happened to me oh julie i'm in love are you really honey who is he i don't know he was standing on the dock and i came down the gangplank and all of a sudden i looked up and and there he was and he he looked so so different from anybody else i'd ever seen in my whole life he was so so beautiful. But honey, suppose he turned out to be a, a no-count river fella. Oh, if I found out he was a no-count, I'd stop loving him. Wouldn't you stop loving Steve if he treated you mean? No, honey. No matter what he did. You see, child, love's a funny thing. There's just no sense to it. It's like that thing you always sing when we're having our walks together. Yes, it certainly is. Fish gotta swim and birds gotta fly. I gotta love one man till I die. And hell of a bad man of loving that man of mine. That's the way it was for Julie, and that's the way it was for me. All that night, I lay awake in my bunk, listening to the river whispering to itself, wondering if I would ever see Gaylord Ravenall again. And then came the morning that brought so many changes. Julie and her husband left the showboat, and I was suddenly made the leading lady. And as I stood on the deck beside my father, listening to him talk to Gaylord Ravenall, you say you'd like me to give you a bet on my boat tonight on credit? That's right. I thought, sir, if I could have a bet on your boat tonight, I could pay you my fare tomorrow at Fort Adams. 
You see, uh, I expect a remittance. You and... ever acted? Acted? We need a juvenile lead. Fifteen dollars a week. Chance to see the world. No responsibility. That's what he means, young man. This is my wife, Parthy, Mr. Ravenel. I'm happy to meet you. How do? We don't like to pick up actors off the wharves. But we can't be choosy just now. Madam, your courtesy is exceeded only by your charm. My daughter here is going to be the leading woman. This will be her first try at acting, too. So, you're to have your chance to play at make-believe after all. Yes. Well, I, I certainly wouldn't want to miss a chance to be your leading man. And so we sailed up the river into complete enchantment. At night, we did our shows, and I'm sure such love scenes were never seen on any stage before. It was the only time we were sure of being together. All our other meetings were stolen meetings, behind my mother's back. I remember the last meeting we ever had to steal. I told my mother I'd fill her pitcher, and Gay met me beside the water barrel on the upper deck. Darling, darling. I can't stay but a minute. Mother's waiting. Nola. I want to marry you tomorrow in Greenville. But Mother would... She's going to be in Fayette all morning. She told me so herself. Oh, there's a lovely little church in Greenville. But Father, he's liable He was to... the one who gave me the idea of marrying you while your mother was away. Oh, Nola, please say you will. I want to, Gay. I can't stand it this way any longer. I want you all to myself. I want to take you to places you've never seen. I want to show you new cities, theaters, restaurants, and people. And you and I will move among them, but still feel as if we were all by ourselves. Oh, Gay. be back with the second act of Showboat in just a moment. Meanwhile, the railroads ask you to remember this. Of all the people in the United States, few have a greater stake in the continued successful operation of railroads than the owners and operators of the seven and a half million trucks and the 33 million automobiles in this country. To begin with, America could not have built and could not now maintain and operate its motor vehicles were it not for the basic low-cost mass transportation of raw materials and finished products provided by the railroads. Moreover, the great American network of highways could not have been built and could not be maintained today 
without this same underlying transportation service. But railroads play an even more intimate day-by-day part in the satisfactory use of motor vehicles on America's fine system of highways. They do this by moving freight on their own special highways of steel rails. In 1948, the railroads performed 645 billion ton miles of freight service. That is, transportation equivalent to carrying 645 billion tons one mile. In the same year, intercity motor trucks performed only one-eighth as much transportation service. With the already overcrowded conditions on our highways, just imagine what the motorist would be up against if any considerable part of the traffic which moves by rail had to be carried by highway transport. Well, that's one way to look at what railroads mean to motorists. And that's why it is so true that the more the nation's freight is moved on the special steel highways of the railroads, the less will be the wear and damage to the public highways the lower will be the cost of building and maintaining those highways, and the greater will be the satisfaction and safety with which motorists can make use of them. And now we return to Gordon McRae in Showboat with his two charming guest stars, Dorothy Kirsten and Lucille Norman. And so Gaylord Ravenel and I were married, and life was as its springtime. Life was a thing of romance and excitement and adventure. Life was gay. I knew he was a gambler, but it didn't matter. Nothing mattered except that we were together. Well, dear, I think I'll go out and see if my luck's as good as it was an hour ago. Oh, Gay, do you think you ought to? While the cards are running for me, honey, I've got to play them. I'll be back in time to take you out to supper. All right, my darling. I'm so happy. I'm so happy with you, Gay. Why do I love you? Why do you love me? Why should there be two? quickly a love song can turn to minor, how quickly a world can be lost when you're holding it by a shoestring. How many years did we actually have? It seems now they've passed with such swiftness that it is impossible for the heart to follow them or add them up. I do know that our daughter, Kim, was seven the day I walked into an empty, bare little hotel room and found a letter. Dearest, by the time this letter reaches you, I shall be on a train bound heaven knows where. There is nothing left to pawn and no more friends to borrow from. I am enclosing $200. This will let Kim finish her term at school, and then you can both go to your parents. I am doing this because I think it is right and because I love you. Please believe I will always love you. Goodbye, your own gay. Oh, gay, gay! That was 
goodbye. That was how spring and summer ended, with a chill blowing across the heart and the knowledge that love was gone and it was autumn. And then the long years set in. I went on the stage, I became successful. And our daughter Kim went on the stage and became even more successful. And I was able to retire. And it seems to me now, looking back, that I stopped living from the time I opened that letter to the moment when my father's letter came. And I hurried back to the showboat. And there, standing beside him, was Gay. Hello, Nola. Gay. Isn't that your daughter, Captain Hawks? Uh, yes, yes, that's Nola. How do? I remember you when you were leading lady on the showboat. And uh, that's your husband, isn't it? I was here on this levee the day you were married. My, my, how excited we all were. Well, glad to see it turned out well and you're still happy together. Good night. Good night, dear. Good night, Nola. There isn't any way to ask you to forgive me. Now, hold on a minute, Gay. Trouble is, you keep blaming yourself for things, and the fact is, you is just unlucky. The lucky people are the ones that get to do what they enjoy doing. I always enjoyed running a showboat, and I made a success out of it. Now, you, you was meant to be a gentleman. Biggest mistake you ever made was to try to earn a living. Nobody ever expected it of you. You was on the right track when you started to be a leading man on the river. You could have got to be a big Broadway actor. And you would not never had to work anymore. <laughs> Andy? Uh, Andy? Barthy's calling me. I guess I'd better be going. I don't understand it, Captain Andy. Married all these years, and yet every time she calls, you jump. What is it? What has she got? You got a mean disposition. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm coming, Parthy. I'm coming. Gay, listen. Remember how we used to stand up here listening to them singing below? Oh, Gay, welcome home, my darling. Welcome home. I'm back to stay, Nola. I know now where my home is and where I belong. Here we all work on the Mississippi. Here we all work while the white folks play Pulling those boats from the dawn to sunset Getting no rest till the judgment day Don't look up and don't look down You don't dare make the big boss frown Bend your knees and bow your head And pull that rope on From the Mississippi, let me go away from the white man boss. Show me that stream called the River Jordan. That's the old stream that I long to. Body all aching 
shaking and rack with pain. Oh, dead barge, lift that bail. Feel drunk and you land in jail. Oh, gets weary and sick for trying. I'm tired of living and scared. Ladies and gentlemen, Dorothy Kirsten and Lucille Norman will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, this is Gordon McRae giving a vote of thanks to our excellent supporting cast, Earl Ross, Norma Varden, and Jane Morgan, for their fine performances in Jerome Curran and Oscar Hammerstein's musical play, Showboat, which was based on the novel of the same name by Edna Ferber and adapted for radio by our own Gene Holloway. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. These railroads are your hometown partners. They are an essential, dependable working part of the life of thousands of cities and towns all over America. Railroads employ local people, often buy supplies locally. They own local property and pay local taxes on it. They are responsible citizens and good neighbors in your own hometown. And now, here are Dorothy Kirsten and Lucille Norman. Thank you, Gordon, for inviting me as your guest on tonight's opening Railroad Hour program. I love seeing the music from Showboat. I know, Dorothy. That wonderful album of Showboat music you just recorded was one of the reasons I wanted you with us tonight. And, Lucy, we'll be looking forward to October 31st for your return trip in the operetta Blossom Time. I'll be glad to be aboard, Gordon. We'll be glad to have you. <laughs> and, Dottie, after your season at the Met, how about getting together with us in The Merry Widow and Bittersweet? Wonderful. It's a date, then. <laughs> And be certain to listen next week, the both of you, because we're doing Sigmund Romberg's romantic operetta, New Moon. And my guest will be the lovely motion picture and concert star, Ilona Massey. Wouldn't miss it. You can count on me. All aboard. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae is now being seen in the Warner Brothers Technicolor production, Look for the Silver Lining. Dorothy Kirsten appeared through the courtesy of Lucky Strike's Light Up Time. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the Association of American Railroads. And now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> the stars on NBC.